Thank you for inviting me here. Uh, it's an honor to be in the mecca of design and fashion. Um, uh, we are a mover plastic-free sportswear. We are a small Swiss independent company. Swiss people like to be small and independent. Uh, I'd like to um, speak today about the relation between um, sp uh, sports and nature with regards to our background in technical sporting garments and our passion for the outdoors. Um, the planet first. Um, these small animals are copepods. You may know these. They have five gigatons of this less than one millimeter size um, zooplankton living in our uh, world's uh, oceans. Um, every, every night uh, they migrate from 200 meters below the sea surface to the surface to eat on zooplankton, and, uh, on phytoplankton, sorry. And by doing that, uh, they move more water than the moon and the tides. It's the biggest mass migration on the world. Uh, but not uh, just that, uh, they eat 30 times the carbon that humanity can produce by burning fossil fuels. Uh, the same humanity has wiped out 50% of these animals in the last, of the marine planktons in the last uh, 70 years. So there's very direct impacts to uh, what we do. How did they wipe them out? Through chemicals and through plastic uh, pollution. So ocean plastic pollution, the, the plastics we see floating on the oceans, whiling in the gyres or, um, uh, or uh, washed up on the, on the beaches, these, uh, sorry for that. Uh, these plastics only account for 8% of, uh, of the total plastic pollution, ocean pollution. These are the ones killing the birds, the turtles, and the whales. It's just 8%. All the rest, 92%, is a soup of microplastics. And out of that soup, a big third comes from our textiles, synthetic textiles. Um, and this is what we can address. And so the, the, because the impact we can have just by changing our clothing habits is significant. It is a third of the actual ocean problem. For some strange reason, um, almost all sportswear is made of plastic since the last 50 years. Um, and when we say for no real reason, is that we, as, as a sport people, we don't really understand why we never questioned that before. Um, did Isis and build 7% faster than Jesse Orbans was in 1936, thanks to his plastic shirt? Certainly not. It would actually be very interesting to see these both guys run today on the same clay track um, and, and starting st without starting blocks and see w which one would win today. So is this progress? And then, of course, the um, industry answer to, and, and the regulators answer um, to, well, the industry, sorry, answers to the, 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 the plastic problem is to re rely on, um, on profitable science and to work on plant-based plastic, on algae-based plastic, on corn-based plastic, on whatever biopolymers or PLA, recycled plastics, all these materials that will never degrade as long as they're in contact with oxygen. And by chance, we still have oxygen in the ocean and uh, on, our, on, on our outdoors. Um, it's a very cynical answer from the industry. This is a, a, a label of a pair of shoes I bought last year to go in the mountain. And it's written here that it's the upper fabric is made of 50% or more of recycled content, while the sole has at least one material in the midsole Outsole contains a minimum of 3% biobase of 5% recycled content. Wow, <laughs> that's stunning. It's really, this is, new, this is new balance, yeah. It's really amazing. And to ask the question is, shall we transform a toxic linear economy? We know it is toxic into a toxic circular economy. This is your bin. But it's a nonsense when you think of why would we 
put something that we have taken out of the nature, which is toxic, back into the environment. And we say, ask the fish what this one thinks about uh, recycled plastic. This fish has eaten 9% of recycled plastic. 9% is in green here. Uh, the number of, uh, sorry, here. Uh, recycled plastic today, worldwide. In 40 years from now, this will double to 17%, 18%. Meanwhile, the plastic production will triple, exceeding 1.2 billion tons of plastic per year. And this is the result of our recycling plastic policy. It is to allow the industry to continue the business. We are sounding the alarm. We are a very small company, <clears throat> but we decided to go completely plastic-free three years ago. And we launched this, this project in, in, in October 2021. And we decided to use no PLA, no bioplastic, no compostable plastic, uh, no elastan, no lyocell, no spandex, nothing, no lies at all. And we just had to rethink and reinvent everything to create new garments. But nothing that much new neither, because basically it is a cotton sweater and a wool short. Um, what is very interesting is to understand how far we can go in the process and what we can make out of it and how we feel wearing this instead of what we have been wearing in the last 50 years. Um, so we worked on the trims, on the accessories, on the details. Our threads are cotton. Uh, we struggled with the zippers, uh, not with the zippers because the teeth and the slider and the puller are made of metal, but with the tape, the band it is fixed on because it's only made on polyester today or a mixed polyester cotton. Um, the small um, uh, cord stoppers or of course buttons is easy, uh, but we had to to reimagine a lot of small things. This is a little extract of the latest collection. What is beautiful is to work with our suppliers on the actual structures of, uh, of, of the fabrics because what is available can, can be enhanced, can be improved, and that's what is very interesting in the process we are in today. And amazingly, as a result, it all gets much more comfortable. And there, there is a reason for that, and that was our starting point. It was a search for breathability, because we used to do technical ski clothing with Gore-Tex and polyamide, and our frustration was the breathability, the thermal exchange of the system. And that's how we came, actually, not through a sustainable angle, but through a functional angle to this, uh, to this uh, new approach and new concept. So we are a very small team in Lausanne. Um, dedicated, uh, passionate by outdoors, and, uh, and very attentive to details. We um, are ready to move now to the next level. Our project is uh, ready to go. We sell online. We have a logistic base in Spain. We produce mostly in Portugal. Obviously, we rethought also the packaging, the, the, the tool to ship uh, the flow with our suppliers and manufacturers. We were lucky enough to be able to rethink everything from scratch. And now we are at the point that we have to communicate, to reach out, um, to gain traction, and to move uh, faster, and to sell, uh, to sell less garments, possibly, to more people. Thank you very much for listening. And I'm passing the word to you.